Hi guys! I just wanted to make a video to show you this beautiful van der Speck. I saw it on the van der Speck sale group on Facebook. Uh, somebody in Switzerland was selling it for a really, really good price. And I was looking for something to um, buy myself as a reward for finishing my dissertation and for nearly finishing my masters. So I decided to buy it. And it's beautiful, it's lovely. It's um, Van der Speck Senior Custom Planner in, I'm not going to pronounce this right. The leather is either Amarina or Aramina, and I can't remember which way round it is, but it's this sort of pink, um, not bright pink, this is more bright pink. I don't think that the, the lighting or the camera is going to show it up properly. It's not sort of, oh my gosh I've got so many things that I could compare it to here. It's not sort of this fluorescent pink, it's not a light pink, it's a light pink, this is pink Ted. Um, it's not um, really, oh, it's, it's hard to describe, it's a beautiful colour. It's, so in some lights it looks red, in some lights it looks pink, isn't too bright so it's quite professional looking at the same time and it's um, got the same leather on the inside and it's a senior size and it came with 20 millimeter rings when I got it because I hadn't used a 20 millimeter ring binder for a while I'd forgotten how small the rings were because in my A6 binders I have 25 millimeter rings so um, I did think whether I could put up with the rings but they're not big enough for me and I use A6 paper rather than the senior size paper which is slightly narrower so it was um, the, the paper was already at the edge of the planner and um, I could buy bigger rings but then the circumference of the rings would push out the instead of them being this big they'd be this big which that extra um, diameter would push out the paper even further towards the edge of the planner. I've um, recently switched my planner back into a traveller's notebook, an A6 traveller's notebook, and I was using this as a as a notebook, not a planner, inside my handbag. But I wasn't actually using it. Um, it might just be circumstance that I just didn't have occasion to write in it. But um, I like carrying around one thing and I really want to carry this around so if I'm not actually carrying around a binder as a notebook I'm not going to be able to carry this around so I decided to de-ring it now I would have to de-ring it to use it anyway even if I wanted to keep using it as a binder I would have to take out the 20 millimeter rings to replace them with the 25 millimeter rings so de-ringing it wasn't really a drastic decision because I would do it even if I was keeping it as a binder um, so I looked up the videos on YouTube of how to de-ring Gilios and van der Specks and um, I tried and I couldn't get the, the front plate off and then I managed to get the front plate off after the third attempt and it did bend which is a problem there is a method which destroys the binding system and then there is a method that doesn't destroy it but it's harder to do because you're trying to do it more carefully um, and then I couldn't get the rings out but today there was a Filofaxi Skype call um, the round table um, so I had a chance to ask Steve how to do it, Steve Filofaxi King, who made the video on how to de-ring uh, Van der Speck and Agilio. So I asked him and he helped me to de-ring it. Yay! Um, so here are the bits. If you've never seen what a ring mechanism from inside a Gilio or a Van der Speck looks like, it looks like this. These are the parts. Um, a Filofax one might be different the more um, modern Filofax ones, and by more modern I mean sort of the last 15 years at least, um, are different. So there's this back plate which um, slots into two um, metal 
mechanisms inside the spine of the planner and then there's the rings themselves and then there's the, the tabs that you push down on to open the rings and then there's the front plate so I removed that and then I had a cover that I could even uh, that I could either use to put in a notebook like a Hobonichi Techo, Techo, however you pronounce it, or to make it into a traveller's notebook. Now I've seen where Steve has used the back plate and the front plate of a um, binder to put elastics through the gaps at the top and the bottom and to suspend them through there and to use that as the um, notebook um, elastic thing for the traveller's notebook but um, I think when I have been trying to remove this plate because it's bent it got bent here and here that it now won't slot back in place on the back plate firmly it will slot back if I've got the rings in place but not if I don't have the rings in place so um, I couldn't do it like that so I've done this before I did it in my um, personal size mold uh, personal size Holborn that had um, dodgy rings it had broken rings so I removed the rings on that but that was much more difficult because they're riveted because they have screws which go through the um, the all the parts, so the back plate, the front plate, and then to the like the the back plate is inside the spine of the filofax, and then it goes through here. You have to literally drill into the rivets to destroy them to remove it. Um, the way to um, make a binder that hasn't got the elastics in it already into a traveller's notebook is to make a cardboard insert that goes into the pockets. So you need the um, pockets inside the um, leather to be, a, you know, a, a appropriate um, setup, and this does because it has these um, slip pockets. So what I did was I got some white card. That's just the the cheapest card I've got. I was sort of doing it as an experiment but I've, but I've managed to incorporate that into this. I um, I put the holes in to the top and the bottom. I used three holes at the top, three holes at the bottom to end up with um, three elastics and then the elastic that is a knot inside which you could use to hold a notebook in but I don't at the moment. Um, and then I put them up and down and then that worked so I decided because this shows I wanted it to be pretty rather than just white and then I covered it with scrapbooking cards so that it was um, stronger as well and then um, punched the holes that I'd punched in the white card through to the scrapbooking card and the top and the bottom and um, washi taped it together so that in theory I could remove the scrapbooking card if I needed to and then um, put it in and sort of bent it around the spine carefully so you can see it sort of almost perfectly matches the spine and then um, it's still quite stiff the, um, the cardboard within uh, the binder because it's still moulding itself so it does sort of flip open and it doesn't shut very easily but it works and it holds the notebooks in really well I think I might need to tighten the um, elastics um, but I'll see how it goes I had to put this strip of washi tape here because um, the scrapbooking paper was a bit short so I could see the white through um, and then I've got my notebooks on the elastics I'm able to use the pen loop I'm able to use all the brilliant pockets of the Vanderspeck and it's perfect, it's brilliant, I love it um, totally worth doing if you are um, happy that you may 
damage the rings beyond repair and that you um, may not be able to ever um, put these particular rings back together unless you know exactly what you're doing but for me in the future I can buy another ring set and install it myself so I could have a 25mm ring mechanism in here um, there are alternatives you could um, buy a custom van der Speck and tell Petra who um, is like the manager of van der Speck that you don't want any rings in it in the first place you could um, buy one of their Hobonichi Techo Teco um, covers and um, then that wouldn't come with the um, rings in it um, I'm not sure if they're going to be doing an A6 traveller's notebook in the van der Speck range um, they I think it's called the Codex or no it's called the Nomad the no, the traveller's notebook um, range from van der Speck are called the Nomads and they have a standard size so the normal traveller's notebook size which is long and narrow and they have a small one which is field note size so the same size as a moleskine pocket field notes size um, but they don't have an A6 one and this is another reason why if I A had the money and B um, they did an A6 traveller's notebook I would buy one of theirs but this is brilliant and I love that it's a bit different because my other ones have all got the elastic going across them and that's the closure I love having this um, traditional binder closure on it and I think it looks beautiful from the top and the bottom and it's lovely to hold it's nice and chunky but not too chunky and it has amazing pockets to use I absolutely love it um, if I'd have bought the binder myself first hand rather than second hand from someone I think I would have um, made one of these pockets into a secretarial pocket because I prefer secretarial pockets and if I were um, doing that and I was um, installing an, a notebook inside the front pocket or doing this with the card um, I wouldn't make this one into the secretarial pocket because it needs to be secured at the top really to keep this card in I would make this one into the secretarial pocket but the beautiful thing about travellers notebooks is that it's so easy to make your own insert so you can easily make your own secretarial pockets in a an insert so I'm going to do a setup of this um, this traveller's notebook set up not necessarily in this cover because I'm still setting it up um, with the inserts so by the time I've set it up I may be in another one in one of my um, more conventional traveller's notebooks but um, I will certainly show you the inserts at some point in the near future hopefully within the next month so thank you for watching bye